arrived to half term. I bet you're feeling very relieved today. I certainly am. Anyway, so hope you're feeling really relaxed and chilled now that you don't have to do any schoolwork for a week. Um, let's have a look at what we're studying. If you remember from Christmas when Jesus is born to Easter when he dies, we're just filling in this time by looking at the life of Jesus and we're focusing specifically on his miracles and within the miracles we're focusing on healing miracles. You've probably seen the little video clip. If you haven't, I'm pretty sure you know this story quite well. If you want to look at it in the Bible, Matthew, Mark and Luke record this story. It's the story of the paralyzed man, the one where the four friends bring him to Jesus. And I'm just looking at the Luke version, uh, Mark version, sorry, which is Mark 2. So I know you know this story really, really well. It's kind of like a favorite for younger children in Sunday school. And so what have we got here? We've got four friends with another friend who is paralyzed and these friends are so committed to their paralyzed friend that they decide they've heard about Jesus this is one of the miracles in the early ministry of Jesus and he's back in his hometown so he's these people you know they've probably known Jesus growing up or heard about him and it's just this big deal so, but the house is really crowded so they're facing some obstacles so let's have start with just thinking about friendship you need different kinds of friends through, through life you need friends that are school friends you need, need somebody in the classroom that you can sit next to or you know can just feel like this you're not on your own on all those hours while you're at school you might want a sports friend, somebody that shares your passion for a sport or something. Um, you might need just somebody to share with, somebody to talk to about your stuff that understands you. But there's a type of friend that is a Christian friend. Now, you can have a friend that is a Christian that isn't necessarily a Christian friend to you. A Christian friend, my definition of a Christian friend, is somebody who brings you closer to Jesus. And that's what these four guys did. The man was in need and they brought him to Jesus. And a good Christian friend, they won't judge you when you're having a hard time, they won't preach at you. But just by talking to them, just by uh, their attitude to you, they'll reconnect you with Jesus again when you've kind of lost your, a bit of your focus there. So really, really encourage you at this time in your life, find yourself a Christian friend, be a Christian friend to somebody else. We kind of try and do that in Sunday school and when we're on Zoom. Um, but it's really, really important for you in the future what you'll be looking for, because the same applies to your marriage partner. You can have a marriage partner who you've totally fallen in love with, is your best friend and everything, but it's a marriage partner that also shares your faith is a whole other dimension. And I'm sure your parents will really want you to marry somebody who's a Christian. But I think it starts right now with learning how to share your faith within a friendship. Anyway, so these guys, they overcome all kinds of obstacles to get their friend to Jesus. The second thing I want to challenge you on today is faith. The four friends had absolute faith that Jesus would heal their friend. They knew their friend was in need. They trusted in God's, Jesus's love for him, his compassion, in his power. And even though there were all those obstacles in the way, their faith never wavered. And you can almost feel them smiling down that hole in the roof going, okay, Jesus, we've got him there, do your stuff. Um, but th this absolute commitment to faith. Now, what I want to challenge you with today is that faith isn't something just in our heads or our hearts. It's not a feeling. Faith means action. Faith changes the way that we live. And if you believe something about God, that will change how you live your life. 
If you believe God is with you wherever you go, that will change how you live. If you believe God is powerful, it will change how you live. If you believe that God loves you, it will change how you live. And these friends, they were called to take action on their faith. The paralyzed man himself, Jesus says to him, okay, get up, take up your mat and walk. He had to do something. So just a quick challenge there. Have a look at your faith right now and say, is your faith transferring into action, into how you live your life? And finally, this is the really interesting twist, I think, in the, in the story. I mean, it would, it would just be a great story if it stopped kind of halfway through and the man gets lowered down and Jesus gives, oh, I see your faith, you are healed, and the man walks off into the sunset kind of thing. But he, Jesus doesn't. There's this big twist at that point, and Jesus sees this man on this mat and says, your sins are forgiven you. And everyone goes, woo, where did that come from? And all the teachers of the law start in their heads going, oh, who does he think he is forgiving sin? Only God can do that. And Jesus is making a teaching point here. But I think he's also at the personal level, I think we need to know Jesus is way more interested in the whole of us than just meeting a specific need. He's not, he doesn't want, and I think there's something in us when the chips are down, when we've, we've lost something that we really need, that we are facing a test or an exam, we're facing some difficulty, we go, God, help me, please. Um, Sickness is one of those times. God, please heal me. Um, but God wants to be more than that. Not just the person we turn to when things are going badly. He wants the whole of our lives. He cares about the whole of us, not just our health. Uh, or not just that big need. And sometimes we can't see past that big need, but God can and Jesus knew that the man's main need, and our main need is always for Jesus to forgive our sin, get our lives back on track the way that he designed us to be, and then all the other things can fall into place. So those are my three challenges for you. Um, to be a good Christian friend, have a good Christian friend, Always be the person that draws people closer back to Jesus. Secondly, that your faith is not just a feeling. You need to live your life in accordance with your faith. So just check out how it changes how you live your life. And thirdly, that Jesus is interested in the whole of you. So if you're getting into a little bit of that habit of just using God when you need him or when you think you need him, Go back and, and, and God is there for the whole of your life, not just for those moments when you really need him. I suggest that you, if you've, you've got somebody there, your mum, your dad, whoever you're closest to, be a really good idea to, to just spend a little bit of time going over those things and chatting about them, talking about them and seeing where that leads you. Okay, I'll see you a bit later on Zoom. Have a great Sunday. Love you all. Bye.